Hey, I'm Arcee and this is the episode 20 about creating a multiplayer game in Node.js. In this video, what I'm planning to cover is saving the player progression. So in the last video, we added a item system to the game so we can collect potion and use them to generate super big attacks. Um, so the item system works fine, except that if I log out of the game and try to sign back in, I will no longer have the items I had collected before, which is obviously a problem. So in order to save the player progression, we will need to use a database. So right now in the code, all the database code have been put into comments, um, so it's not used. And the reason was to make it easier for you to um, test the game. So being able to, to follow this um, series without having to download and install the database on your computer. But for this um, video, you will need to download the database. I will put the link in the description if you want to check out um, the video where I explain how to download and install um, the database. So the first thing we are going to do is to put all the database code in a new file over here and we will call it database.js. So it will contain this over here and it will also have those three functions, which are the three functions we are currently using. And I think that's pretty much it. Now, if you remember correctly, variables that are um, declared with var inside a file in Node.js won't be accessible in other files. So for example, I will not be able to access is valid password over here. It needs to go on the global object. Um, so one thing you can do um, is create a um, new variable without the var, so database equal empty object, and then add a bunch of um, attributes to that object, for example, oops, this over here. There you go. And then on the other files, well, first of all, we need to require it, otherwise nothing will happen. There we go. So now anywhere in the Node.js code, I can access database and all the function related with it. So for example, is valid password will become database dot is valid password. Um, this becomes that, add user. And I think that's pretty much it. So what I'm going to do now is to add back the um, database codes, but I still want to be able to run the game without a database. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new variable called use database. That can be true or false. Um, for this video, it will be true, of course, because we want to save it. Um, so if we use the database, then we will require Mongo.js, which is the, the database um, module. And over here, if we use database this, otherwise no. If I don't use the database, we do like we used to, otherwise we add like this. There we go. So right now in the database, we are using two um, collections. The first one is account and the other one is progress. So in the account, it's a bunch of username password and it's used for logging into the game. And we also have a um, progress collection, which is unused right now. But what I'm planning to do is um, to make it so it has a username so we can actually fetch it. Um, and then it has a bunch of items, which is an ID and an amount. So I'm going to add two new service. The first one will be called um, get player progress. And how it's gonna work is that you provide a username and then it will return the progress, which is a bunch of items. So if I'm not using the database, then I will always return an empty list of items. And otherwise, I'm going to um, search it. So there's a find one, um, which is more performant than the find. So back then we were using find over here, but what we should have used is find one. And instead of returning an array of, of stuff, it just returns the element right away. So we can change that. And it's a lot more performant because as soon as it finds one, it stops looking through the database. Um, yeah. So for the get player progress, what we want to do is to find one that matches the username provided. Don't need the password. 
and over here we will get the result. So the result will be an object that has this pattern and we only want to return the items part. There we go. Um, next, we want to have the save player progress. Don't need a callback for that. Over here, it will be um, data. Data will be an object of that shape. So all of this. And what we are going to do is that if we are not using the database, then we will simply do nothing. And otherwise, um, we will need to answer the data in the database. So there are multiple ways to do it. I don't want to go too much into the detail of how to do database queries because it's a very complex topic and I could make an entire series out of it. But in short, what you need to know about the database is, is the find one to fetch one data. There's the find to fetch multiple data. There's the insert to insert a new entry um, to the database. But using this, you can have duplicate entries and it's kind of problematic, especially for um, player, player progression, for example. So we cannot simply do um, insert data because if we do that, we would have duplicated data. So we have insert and then we have update. So update, there's two version of the update. There's the normal version, which basically takes an existing entry and then it alters it. Um, the other type of update is called upsert. And how it works is that it tries to find um, the query in the, the table. If it finds it, then it will um, update it, overwrite it entirely. And if it does not, then it will add a new entry. So it's like a mix between a normal update and an insert. And in that case, this is exactly what we want. So how it works is that we type update, then we put the query. So what we are looking for, so we want to look for someone that has the username, data.username. If it finds one, then it will overwrite all the data with the new data over here. And if it does not find one, then it will add a new entry with data. And finally, in order to have the absurd behavior, we need to add absurd through. Um, one final thing is that uh, I mentioned before that we did not want a, a callback, but actually we will need one. So I'm going to add this here, callback, and here, callback. And if you want to put a, an optional parameter, one little trick you can use is this over here. So if CB is defined, it will keep its value. Otherwise, it will become empty function. So even if I don't provide any CB, so any callback, it will still work. And finally, one thing I need to change is that over here, when we add a new player, we insert into the account um, collection, but we also want to save the player progress with an empty progression. It looks something like this. So username, data username, items will be empty items. And then once the action is complete, then we say that the uh, user is complete. Next, we need to fetch it, um, actually save it when the player disconnects and also fetch it when he signs in. So when we sign in, um, we check if the password is valid. If it's not valid, I'm just going to switch that a little bit. So if it's not valid, then we return that success false. Otherwise, what we are going to do is call the function get, uh, get player progress. Name. Over here, we will have the progress that we will forward to player on connect. There we go. Then in the player on connect, we will have a third field, a third parameter with the actual progress object that we will forward once again to the um, player constructor over here. So now in the parameter, we have access to the progress. And over here in the inventory, we're going to be able to access the items. And finally, in the inventory over here, items. There we go. 
So one thing we will need to change, it's a, a detail, is that when the player signs in, we want to send him his um, inventory. Right now we don't do that. It's only when something um, changes. Um, so in the unconnect over here, I'm going to call the player inventory refresh render. And that way we are sure that when the player signs in, it has the, the right inventory. On connect, I think that's pretty good. And the final part is when the player disconnects, what happens? Um, so first, we have this over here. We get the the player. If the player, if there is no player because there is a bug or something, we just ignore it. Um, and otherwise, we want to save the progress. So save. Player progress. And if you remember correctly, the object we want we need to provide is a username and then a list of items. In that case it's inventory items. Okay, so let's test what we have created. So if you remember correctly, in order to start the database server, um, what you need to do is to um, go into the bin folder of your MongoDB um, installation folder and then type MongoD. So this will start the database. Then after that, you want to start the Node.js server. Um, so what you want to do is to open another terminal. One thing you can do on Visual Studio Code is type, um, there's a shortcut called Control Tilt. Tilt is the um, key next to the um, one, the number one. And then over here, we simply type Nod app. This will start the server. We go to localhost 2000, and then we um, try to sign up and then sign in. We can shoot um, bullets, and as you can see over here, we are actually gaining potions. Um, this is normal. Then if we refresh and then try to sign in again, we still have the potion. So we still have the seven potion. So what we coded actually worked. So I guess that will be pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it and see ya.